impacted as planned analysis. This method involves the analysis of the contractor's as planned program. Delay events are inserted into the as planned program as time duration activities and the critical path is reanalyzed to ascertain the impact to the as planned program. The resulting delay, if any, is the delay that will be used as a basis for an EOT claim. Strengths of the impacted as planned analysis. First, it is simple to understand and second, it is suitable for small projects where the parties want a quick settlement. What are the weaknesses? First, it is a highly theoretical analysis which does not take into account actual progress or situation on site. And second, it is difficult to analyze and allocate liability for concurrent delays. Therefore, it is not suitable when there are a lot of concurrent delays. Now let's carry out an impacted as planned analysis in MS project. So the project we're looking at is a simple one. It's a construction of a tunnel and I've already created the activities and indented it with WBS codes. It's actually very easy to create this um, project and I'll show you how to do it. If you look at the Excel folder, which is also included within the workshop files, all you have to do is copy and paste. I'm just going to demonstrate how easy it is to create these activities. So tunnel excavation starts on the 29th of December 2016. That's fine. Tunnel concreting commences on the 23rd of March 2017. So let's change that. Inspection and handover 18th of May. Project finish 25th of May. Now let's indent the activities to make sure that they're all summarized properly. There you go. And now it's time to enter the durations. So the tunnel excavation is 60 days. Concreting, 40 days. Inspection and handover, five days. Project finish, one day. And finally, we need to link the activities. So I'll be finished to start links. And it'll be a good time to turn on the details panel to make sure everything is start to link, uh, sorry, finish to start, but it's quite clear from the Gantt bars that they are all finished to start links. It's all fine. Now you might notice here that there's a small icon um, in the information column. This stands for constraints. MS Project has got a nasty habit of introducing constraints when you do certain activities within MS Project. So it's generally a very bad idea to have constraints. It can wreak havoc on your analysis. So let's get rid of it. I'm going to highlight all the activities that have uh, these constraints. And you can check it from the details pane or right click information advanced and it'll be in the constraints panel you can't see it now because um, you've got more than one activity is selected so let's change that to as soon as possible which is the default option and there you go so that's how you create this particular construction program obviously we only need one set of activities so i'm going to delete this section now before we do anything, the first thing I'm going to do is set a baseline. Okay, so let's check if it's ready. And there you go. If you use the tracking Gantt option, you can see the baseline in light gray or dark gray just below the normal bars. 
Okay, so the baseline has been set and now we can start impacting this program with a delay event. Different delay analysts impact programs with delay events in different ways. Some of them tend to put all the delay events at the end of the program and link them to the relevant activities. Others tag on the delay events to the end of any activity that is impacted. But what I like to do is to split any activity that has been impacted by a delay event and insert the delay event based on the exact date of occurrence. Now if you're confused, don't worry about it. Once you've completed this workshop, the whole procedure will be crystal clear. For the moment, let's go back to the Excel file, which is included in your folder. So this is the delay event which took place. Activity ID number four, delay event number one. There's a design problem. Obviously, it is caused by the client. The works are suspended for, it's actually suspended for 10 days, but there are a couple of steps to be followed while doing an impact analysis. The first thing you need to do is insert the delay event into MS project, make it zero, and make sure that the logic of the network is not affected. So what do I mean by that? If you go back to the first program, you can see that the tunnel works starts on the 29th of December 2016 and finishes on the 25th of May 2017. That's 106 days. So once you've inserted this delay event and you give it zero days duration and you relink all the activities logically, I'll show you how to do that. The most important thing you have to check is the start, finish and duration. Make sure nothing has changed. This is extremely important because if you disregard this step and you directly impact the event and put a duration of 10 days or 20 days based on how long it took, there may be some issues if you got the logic wrong or if you linked something incorrectly, the whole analysis will just fall apart. So the first step is to insert the delay event, make it zero, and check whether the start, finish, and duration are exactly the same prior to inserting the delay event. Once you've done that, the next step is to impact the overall program with the actual duration of the delay. In this particular example, the delay is 10 days. Okay, so while we're on this Excel file, please click on this sheet tab. Now this is a delay analysis table. The contents of this table will vary and it depends on the type of delay analysis methodology you use. This particular one is for impacted as planned analysis. I'll just go through the table with you. Let's look at a few definitions. NND stands for non-excusable, non-compensable delay. It's also referred to as an inexcusable delay. This is a delay caused by the contractor. The next type of delay is an END delay, which is excusable, non-compensable, also referred to as an excusable delay. Now this is usually caused by weather or any event which is not caused by the contractor or the client. And finally you have ECD, which is an excusable and compensable delay, also referred to simply as a compensable delay. This is a delay caused by the client and the contractor is entitled to an extension of time and recovery of prolongation costs. Let's go through the various components of this delay analysis table. You have serial number, activity IDs, a description, which is a description of the original baseline program and a delay event. In this particular example, it's a design problem and the works are suspended. You also need to have a program reference which will be original baseline program reference and your delay event program reference, which you will be saving as a separate baseline. Then you'll have the type of delay. Since the design 
delay is caused by the client, it's an excusable and compensable delay. Dates associated with the start and finish of the delay event. Now this column is very important. It's the duration of delay taken from MS project. As you can see here, it's only 10 days, even though the overall difference is 14 calendar days. These 10 days exclude Saturdays and Sundays. So it's 10 working days. And I'd just like to mention that when you move on to this section here, everything will be in calendar days. So this 10 days translates into 14 days of extension of time. Because when you submit a claim for an extension of time, it's based on calendar days, not working days. So you have a pre-IAP project completion date and a post-IAP project completion date. IAP stands for Impacted As Planned. And uh, you have to answer whether the delay is critical or not. If the delay is critical, then you have to fill up this section. It's related to critical delays. And you have to insert the calendar delay within the appropriate column, whether it's NND, ECD, END, concurrent, etc. And the conclusion or the overall impact is shown here. If the number is negative, that means there's a critical delay to the program. If it's positive, that means the works are ahead of program. This section here is for non-critical delays. So if the delay was not critical, it did not affect the critical path, but it maybe caused disruption, you could enter the data here. And um, obviously there won't be an extension of time claim, but you could possibly have a claim for disruption. So that's the delay analysis table. And the overall conclusion is at the bottom here where you have the as planned project completion date and the estimated project completion date, giving you an overall delay to the project in calendar days. Now let's go back to MS project and carry out an as planned impact analysis. So if you remember, the delay event affects the tunnel concreting activity. So we are going to insert the delay event in this section here. And once more, you may come across other delay analysts doing it in different ways. But I have noticed that when I present a delay analysis by using the methodology that I'm about to demonstrate, it is much more easier for a third party to understand the overall logic, especially if he's not an engineer or if he or she does not have a lot of experience with programs or delay analysis. Right, let's get to it then. So the first thing I'm going to do is add three new tasks. I'm going to go back to Excel and copy the description and paste it in MS Project. I'm just trying to save time. Typing it up will take more time. So I've literally split the tunnel concreting into tunnel concreting pre-delay, another new activity for the delay event, and tunnel concreting post-delay. After I've inserted all the relevant durations, I will delete the original tunnel concreting activity. So I'm just updating the start dates based on the information given in the Excel file. When you see this pop-up menu, please make sure that you click OK to the first auto link option. This is just how MS Project works. You have to be extremely careful and cognizant of these pop-up menus. For the moment, I'm going to convert this delay event into a milestone. Now we have to set the start date for the tunnel concreting post delay. Obviously it should start straight after delay event number one. So it should be the 11th of April 2017. In this pop-up menu, choose the second option, which is moving the activity without adding a link. Now we have to enter the finish date for the tunnel concreting post delay activity, which is the 17th of May 2017 giving us a duration of 27 days. Now there are some question marks after these durations because MS Project is estimating these days. We will correct it. And you can also see these small icons in the information columns. These are constraints 
inserted by MS project and we will remove them shortly. For the moment, let's put a finish to start link between the tunnel excavation and the tunnel concreting pre-delay activity. Next, let's put a finish to start link from the delay event to the tunnel concreting post delay. And finally, we'll insert another finish to start link from the tunnel concreting post delay activity to the inspection and handover. So now the whole network is logically linked. Next, please check that the original start, finish and duration has not changed. This is a very critical check. Next, modify the estimated durations to actual durations by typing in 13 days and 27 days. Now it's time to remove the constraints. So choose the relevant activities, go to the task pane below and change the constraint setting to as soon as possible, which happens to be the default setting. Now we can safely delete the original tunnel concreting activity. Please make sure that the original start, finish and durations have remained unchanged. And that is your impacted program, albeit with a zero duration delay event. So everything looks good. Now it's time to insert the actual delay to the delay event. Just before we do that, I'm going to save the project file. So go to file, save as, and I'm going to call it second step. So now let's change the duration to 10 days. And there you have it. The original finish date has been pushed out and the revised project duration is 116 days. This ties up with what we have here. Well, actually the check should be done in the reverse order. You do it in MS project first and then you update the Excel table. But for the purposes of this presentation, I made sure that the Excel file was also complete so that it would be easier for you to follow the overall logic. Now let's have a look at the tracking Gantt and compare the actual program with the baseline. There's a clear variance between the activities. And that's how you carry out an impacted as planned analysis.